Do I have something that might be more appropriate for this? A set of existential dread. Underground Lake City, that seems apropos. No. There. This uh, Yoshimitsu. Ah. Uh. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh no, I've opened mid coffee. They're not mean to do that. Yeah, this kind of works. So far. Let's just stick with us right now. All right. All right. Oh, where really you start, but people slipped away. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. Welcome back. All right, everybody. Welcome to Bears and Dragons, but uh, the uh, show where a bunch of snooty ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you. Uh, previously on Bears and Dragons, what happened last time? We finally made it to Gravel. After months, like at least a month of traveling, our weary adventurers made it to Gravel. Our weary Where... adventurers who still don't have a, have a party name, but hey, no one's asked. Pretty much. Um, we found a room, a little inn, thanks to the um, door guards uh, guarding the main the gate. They were able to help us out and all. With locating the stall that we needed to for the one person to give them the goods. And for us to find an inn where... Roderick went to go ahead and turn in all the stuff, so we ended... turned in the stuff Ew. that we, we turned some stuff in. We did. Not all of it. <laughs> Blasterder still has something that he has yet to use in combat. I have you. No, you haven't. Um... Yeah. Did you get that too? Pretty sure Lasseter took it because he could wield it. Yeah. It just increases my uh uh spell attack rolls. No, uh, that's the the the, the uh, amulet of the devoured. Yeah. No, was sword. there something? Uh, are you sure that was Lasseter, not Gage? <laughs> Maybe it was Gage. It was I mean, I got a short sword from someone, but that the amulet was the only thing that I got that's magical. Other than Borkat. It doesn't show him on his sheet. Uh, probably didn't add it. Come on. Uh, makes sense if we gave it to Gage. 
But yeah, we um, turned in some of the stuff. The guy was happy about it, gave us some gold for it all. And we kind of just <laughs> called it a night because we finally got to be in a place that was like a bed and all. Ron used Lassiter like a stock puppet. Oh, God. I'm supposed you could call it like that. And it, it got to the point that uh, Holly thought someone was trying to fight. She came out, like, preparing for a fight and everything. And that's pretty much it. Sounds right. Pretty much we made it. Yeah. That was a big thing. We made it to Grickles Duke. Okay, so I want to uh, do a slight Rick honey, Just slight. Because I misunderstood a few things. I described the incor incorrectly. Uh, but I do want... Uh, one thing I did... Yeah, I don't think I did was uh, describe... Just to describe the district that you're in, a wave of heat slams against you as an acrid smog rises to choke the air out of your lungs. The dark lake spreads spreads out beyond the jumble of buildings and streets, reflecting the lights of countless fires burning across the, the city within ho hollowed out columns and slag stalagmites. Though the streets are covered, you move crowded, you move easily within the surging throng of buyers, merchants, and slaves. You aren't the only outsiders here, as you spy Drow, Murph Neblin, Darrow, Orcs, and other races in the crowd. The shouting of people blends with the sounds of distant hammering to create a constant distracting din. Murph Neblins are dark gnomes. Yes. Just so anyone wants to know. Yeah, it's a Jim Jaws, uh, one of those also topsy turvy were, at least, well, mostly. I was tempted to make a character that was a deep gnome. They have some nice perks. Mm. Yeah, what do you get? Uh, the inn that you're at is called the uh, Gold Drawn Lair. In fact, Stool is currently on its spot on the map. Gotcha. Oh. Stool is your icon for, for this is where the party is. You are here. You are here, and Stool represents it, because who's your, your uh, uh, mascot? He's the baby. <laughs> well, he's the baby of the group. He's, he's the mascot. Uh, so, when yeah. the in, in that you yeah. referred to yeah. is the gold brawn in. <laughs> uh, who's, does anybody here speak Dwarvish? Right. Nope. Roderick, you'll yeah. know that uh, gold Bjorn yes. means boulette in Dwarvish. Boulette? Boulette. B U L E T T E. A type of creature. Uh -huh. The inn is built inside a small cavern complex uh, beneath the Blade Bazaar in the northern end of the Dark Lake District. Its halls are cold and damp. A central chamber serves as a dining, dining room branching out into different small twisting halls along. Which the rooms are excavated it is dark, cramped, and uncomfortable, but safe and defensible. So, Lassiter, in addition to being, uh, how, did, how did you phrase that, used like a sock puppet, uh, this was not on a soft bed, but probably on some sort of rock slab with some blankets on it. Uh. Who's complaining? Though I might be complaining, I, I don't know. Uh, how uncomfortable is it? I'm, I'm guessing it's as similar you can to what sleep you've been sleeping. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like much different than what you've been doing. I have a, a body pillow, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> And you are also a body pillow. Because there is something else in the room while you're being 
used like a sock puppet. Um, and that's a little golden pseudo dragon. I mean, I, I would put him in his little uh, dimensional pocket, but he doesn't want to, so nope, he, he, watch that. If he, wants. he likes to watch. He like I like sit back you a little bit. Watch. What rolls his eyes, shrugs. Oh, go find a roommate if you want. Just kind of curls up in the corner while you two go at it. Once it's all over, you're exhausted and you both collapse on the on the bed. Uh, and he he kind of like flies up and just kind of like lands and curls up on your chest. He looks at you and you or just on your feel back if you like judgment. The important question is, did he rage beforehand? <laughs> what what is uh Ron? Like is, is he doesn't he have a, a class. No, he doesn't yeah, have he... a class. I mean if anything, yeah. if you were to give him a class, he's more fighter than he would be barbarian, but he's just a uh... Uh, Although, but, if he did take a class, it would probably be more barbarian. The fuck is oh this race man. called? Oh my god, it's my favorite race, and I can't remember the name of it. Orc? Orc. He's just an orc with a axe, sword, whatever. Okay. With What's his really class, big, orc? <laughs> with a really big rod. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really big hammer. Uh, where were we? Besides making guns, I've I've fallen out exhausted. You're past that exhausted. And All just right. feeling waves of judgment coming from Borcat. Waves upon waves of judgment. <laughs> like as you're going to sleep, the pseudo dragon like lands on you, kind of like looks at your face, kind of, like, inspects you a little, kind of, like, turns around. You feel, you put, your eyes are probably already shut, but you feel him on your back or chest, depending on if you're, you've are you crashed on uh, Ront, uh, on your stomach or on, on your back. Um, but you feel his, his paws, uh, like, skitter around you a little bit. Uh, if you actually saw him he was examining making sure there was no permanent damage and then he like curls up in a ball uh on top of you okay. all right so you all take a long rest and i need everybody to make me a constitution saving throw love it this is not going to be a good day long rest what? A constitution or perception? What was it? Con. Con save. Con save. Con, con, con. Where oh, is that's it? That's nice. It's not here. Should be in the monster saving throws. Oh. So I just click the. This? No. No, that's a constitution check. You're looking for your saving throw sections. Oh, it's just. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it does save me. You mean survival? No, you're looking at your skills. Fuck. So if you go look at your screen, you'll see the oh, roll of stats. You said a con? Yeah. Yep. This one? That's it. Yes. Yay. Nice I should write this down. You were the. You Jeez. save beyond saved. Thyra and Leaf are our constitutional people. Well, so Thyra, you also have Thyra Gage. Oh, yeah. Who totally crits on the con save. Oh, yeah. Plus seven. Jesus. Um, how about Holly? Oh, I guess I should bring up her page. Mm. Our sleeping barbarian. Mm hmm. Okay, Oof. cool. Roderick? Penny. 
I need to roll better. You've been... Everybody else pretty much stayed at the the inn while you went and, and did your transaction with Rashad. I don't remember what his name was. Uh, to, to get all the gold. And as you're walking back, you notice that the, this place... <laughs> it's got a lot of smoke. I mean... You see the forges belling out smoke and everything. It's, it's very hazy, and it's just... Air quality is not so great. This doesn't make sense for Roderick. For the air to be bothering. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Just I'm just saying, like, for the air to be bothering Roderick, that, that, that's saying something, because he doesn't breathe. Uh, he doesn't breathe. Oh, goodness. I totally forgot. And, um, hey, ignore... everybody's fine. Never mind. <laughs> um, uh, ignore this next roll. Once it finishes. Okay. You're just refreshing your... Yeah, because I was like, I got two really low rolls. So it's like, no, I'm not dealing with this. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna reset. Uh, everybody uh, uh, regains consciousness. Last year, you're completely buck ass naked on top of completely buck ass naked romp. Uh, you are feeling the after effects from a heated passionate night of being thrown around like a ragdoll. Your endorphins are up. You're feeling great. Your butt's a little hey. sore. Uh, oh, I'm saving endorphins. throw. <laughs> hmm? What are uh -huh. endorphins? What? What are endorphins? Endorphins? That. They're the chemical in your brain that like, kind of, like make you feel really good, like, um, that it's, it's not the happiness, but it's just that really pumped it, feeling and yeah, you know that time when you when you you've just done something, it was very exertion, but you feel really good about it. It's like the high after an adrenaline rush. After the adrenaline rush. Like a really intense sex session. Like you get that like, oh my god, that was great. You're, you're like, exhausted and everything, but you're like, oh, that was so good. That sort of thing. Those are endorphins. Okay. Uh, it is also, uh, I believe endorphins are set off, set into motion uh, when you have suffered pain. And they're kind of like your internal painkillers. Yes, they are by basically fun. providing you with this more of a feel good uh, feeling to counteract the pain. It's basically what you're you're feeling. You're feeling kind of high from it. It's not something where it's just like, Whoa, dude, high, but it's you just feel really good from the endorphin rush, and you slept like a baby. Roderick didn't get much sleep. Oh, uh, but. He did not suffer ill effects. It was, it was a rough night, but no ill effects for the reason because he can't breathe, fucker. Um, yeah. Hey, at least I think we'll reborn. They don't need to eat, sleep, drink, breathe. Oh, uh, question. Answer forty-two. Um. Okay. Take me a moment. The moment we just do we believe that you're just a vampire, or I don't know what you believe. We've talked about it, and we we've talked about the fact that yeah, I was bitten and all this kind of stuff, but like it feels like it never took because like I could be out in the sun and all that kind of stuff and. Um, Not that you could have tested the whole th sun thing, but yeah, my, by my word, you, like I don't get affected by the sunlight and stuff. So. Um, rushing, wa running water, not a big deal. 
Assuming Garlic. just makes my breath stink. Assuming I did not roll for like that knowledge, could I? Would I know? Could I know? I don't know. Know what? Like that you're not a normal vampire. Like, Roger doesn't type? even know what he actually is. So yeah, I, I don't. Personally, I don't even know. So never mind. You don't know. You, you don't know what a vampire is. He's 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 vampire esque. In your Happy. your military saying uh, military uh, uh, life, they probably mentioned something about vampires. It was vague; it didn't really have much information. But you get the general idea. You know something about the the general notions of uh, they can't come out in the sun because it hurts. Uh, vampires, uh, silver but, fire. Yeah, Man. but water bad. Yeah, well, running water. Bad. Running water, water itself. Bad. It's fine. Unless it's been purified, uh, holy fat. Um, IRL, like, vampires are pretty much like half breeds. They're not fully human, but they're not fully vampire. They're kind of just like a midpoint between the two. Ah. Think Blade. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's a daywalker, he's a vampire. Daywalker. A damn pier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Gotta wake up and ready for the day. What do you do? We are at the tavern. Right? Yes. Well, you're at the uh, uh, dining hall tavern combo. Uh, you come up. You didn't go up to your rooms you went down to your rooms uh Ront I don't know about you but uh I feel like last night um it's a good time to have a drink hey, drink. let's go get a drink and starts putting I'm already down at the bar eating. You might have a flagon of ale, but nothing too big. Bill sitting next to you on a chair with the, the cup of water, which is like too big for him. Like he has to actually drink it with two hands. Oh, Roderick already down. Awesome. Uh, surprise there, dear. Uh, no, it's just that you don't really seem like the early bird type. I'm normally one of the first ones to get up and do exercises and stuff. That's you true. do You do also notice Gage kind of in her, in her corner uh, uh, drinking something, but he's just kind of like stand up. His back is to, to a wall, and he's just kind of, like, scanning the room. He's nearby, but... Heard y'all had a interest in that. But us? No, we... we I need the whole in but behind, behind Lasseter is Ron going with a huge honey, smile honey, on his face. Honey, the whole in heard what was going on in your room last night. We just had a little fun, that's all. That was just a little? Holly's like, I thought I had to go save you. <laughs> <laughs> I did not need saving. <laughs> the rest we know that. Um, how about our other party members? Sarah is enjoying her blissful... <laughs> her blissful deafness. <laughs> she has heard nothing. <laughs> she is still sound asleep. <laughs> There's no noise. There's no light. <laughs> God. Uh, well, I don't. Must have ever ever. She, she, she she's gotten the those like like uh, eye coverings mm -hmm. on. Very daintily sleeping on this lap of rock that is what's considered a bed. 
Well, I'll say uh, we probably shouldn't forget the uh, the rest of our party before we leave. Um, at the same time, I'm ordering multiple drinks. Well, I was thinking of doing a little shopping. Oh yeah, that sounds like a good idea. A, uh, a city and everything. We can I'll actually be here. get some supplies and maybe some equipment. I'll trust us. your judgment. I'm drinking. Today's this morning is a good morning to drink. Oh, I bet, dear. This little gold shooter dragon pops on the table and stares at you very judgingly. I don't need your shit right now. He, he glances at your uh, amulet and glances up at you and just kind of cocks his head. In a minute, I won't need this. Hopefully. And I'm ordering a drink. All right. Uh, so what type of drink are you just getting in your standard ale or what are you ordering? Let, let's, let's do the gauntlet. So let, let's start out something, uh, uh, weak, not, not weak, but like the, uh, whatever is the cheapest Mild. thing they have. You're, you're just going to start off with the low, the low, and you're, you're just going to move up to higher and higher ABV, yeah. right? Pretty much. He uh, the uh, the uh, uh, waitress, a uh, Durgar. Let me just like. Are you sure you want that? It can really get you fucked up. Despite uh, how slowly you're trying to go up, and it's morning. Yeah. Is this the weakest thing that they have? Well, you were, you were trying to do the gauntlet, right? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was just curious. On, yeah, we do have oh, a, yeah. we do have the tradition. If you go through the entire gauntlet, gauntlet and survive and don't pass out, out all your drinks are free. Ah, uh, fuck! Uh, wisdom save. <laughs> Um, but there's not a will. There, yeah. there is, there is a a, a gold pseudo dragon that is staring you down. No, I, I probably shouldn't. It's, I have a obligation at the moment, but I will take a a drink though. All right, laddie. Uh, somewhere in the middle, maybe. Yeah. All right, be right back. And it's only like a couple silver. Uh, you get a nice, you get a nice stout. Flavor is delicious. I must remember to come back to this place. Little Borkad uh, jumps up on your sh shoulder and. Uh, you know, before he jumps up, he 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 looks at you, smiles, he or gives you a look that looks like he's proud of you, and smiles, jumps up and next to you, and kind of wraps himself around your neck. I do this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'm doing, just sitting and drinking. Right. Unless for some reason you guys wait until I'm done drinking to go shopping. Leaf, what you do in the morning? What in the morning? The after a long rest. <laughs> just chilling, just looking around. Dozed off. <laughs> really doing much. <laughs> Roderick declares that he's going to shopping. Are you going to go with him? Yeah, I'll follow him. <laughs> okay. Tyra is is nowhere to be seen. 
to be someone tries to wake her up, so it'd be kind of interesting. I can't hear you. I'm just saying, she's just nowhere to be seen, to, according to, every, to where everybody else is in the, the common room of the uh, inn. Holly looks around and says, Where's Syrah? Oh, uh, I was gonna go and, uh, check on her once I was done with this, uh, cup. Uh, I'll go. She goes down the hall. It's kind of like, tap, tap, tap. Nothing. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, can't hear you. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That point, can we hear that? Um. See. Hold on. Uh, no, for some reason, it's not very loud. Okay. She tries the door. Syra! I hear us. Sy! Oh, does she, does she ugly sleep? Oh, yeah. If you could see inside her room, she has, like, one leg up on the, on the bed. Her hand over her face, her hair is all in this. Just <laughs> There's a reason why she locks her room and, and makes sure nobody can see. Exactly. She presents herself like she's, you know, all hoity toity. But... <laughs> Syra! Uh, she rages. <laughs> Uh, boom, boom, boom. The, 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 the reverberations of, of the, the, uh, the banging on the door reverberate out through the halls of the halls of the, uh, inn. And it can be here, heard even in the common room and you hear Syra. And there's also now a, uh, a, a nice, Dent in the hardwood door. No, it seems to be vibration and suddenly she's like, oh, what? Mm -hmm. What is that? What, what was that? Why it's is time to get shit? up. We're going shopping. Realizing, oh, I still can't hear. She'll snap her finger and resummon Silva. You start hearing things again. Oh, that's right. She's still king. Yeah. That's why I found that from her. You so did I, this to me. I, I totally forgot. <laughs> and it was another thing that happened previously. <laughs> Syra! Time to get up! Oh. oh! Is it morning already? Well, yeah. whatever's considered morning in this damn place. Okay, yes, yes. I I'll be right there. Let me just fix myself up. I like to imagine... <sighs> she just kind of, like, leans next to the door. <laughs> I'd like across. to imagine that, uh, when you whenever you're listening through your owl, there's, like, a, um... Slight delay. <laughs> I was like, hold up, slow down. <laughs> Can I still just communicate with her? Uh, no, because we have she, a <laughs> the, the spores can't like just penetrate through a, through a hardwood door. <laughs> so he doesn't do it mentally? No, he does it through reports for us. And they're blocked? He has to intoxicate you. Yeah, you, you have to inhale the spores, and she can. Inhale. And they only they only last for about 
they only last for an hour and uh she is currently behind a locked hardwood door so it is oh. difficult for the spores to get to her for her to in, even inhale she would probably be able to, to to inhale them perfectly fine considering her snoring but she would probably go <laughs> when, when she inhaled but still can't get the spores to her to for that to happen so how long does it take Syrah to 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 get prettied up? Oh, uh, if you if she if if Holly was listening to the door, she could hear the the casting of you know prestidigitations left and right. I'm gonna make sure the hair is just so the the fake makeup is put on, nice perfumes. The fake ma- uh, the f- makeup, make ma- oh, Of course, the fake up. The fake up. <laughs> the fake up. I was trying to combine no. fake, <laughs> fake and make, and then I realized, oh, they're basically the same word with just so, a different letter. <laughs> and minutes later, she she comes to the door, Disney princess like, oh. <laughs> and then, here, and, and then and then you look over at, at Holly, this really beefy water genasi whose hair always seems to be absolutely perfect. For some reason, this nice, flowy, wavy hair. Uh, I mean, she would definitely be a cover girl. And you have never seen a hair out of place on her head. Even after a a big uh, fight. She just kind of looks at you and like, are you done now? Yes, I am. Where is everyone? Uh, In the common room. And she starts walking down the hall. I'm so good. I'm joining everybody. The, that is also an additional power that that Holly has. Is she always has perfect hair? It is always perfect. Not a Janasi feature. It's just a Holly feature. Holly feature. Oh, she has flowing locks. Oh. The thing is, you know, when you're when you're in the water, when you when you go in the water, you know, like Little Mermaid, the hair is just. Might be floating all over the place, but it looks gorgeous. Still, yeah. it's like her hair is like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holly comes. Holly doesn't look very happy. Kind of, kind of miffed at the the prissiness of Syrah. <laughs> But she's like, here she is. Everything okay? I slept. Last night I slept like a dream. I didn't hear a thing. Oh. And then, and then, and then Sova just goes, who? <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminding people that it's because Cyrus is still deaf. Right. <laughs> he does kind of like look at Syrah just a moment, not judgingly be like, I'm playing yours. Come on. You do see this like little glow around uh, Syrah's eyes that you recognize to be that she's using Sova's senses. Such a, such a nice familiar. Uh, nice. Little Borkad does after all of that, uh, little Borkad does roll his eyes at Syrah. <laughs> oh, um, I I lift my cup up to Borkad and see if he like takes a, a lick or whatever. He he looks over at you and just the motion that you get is like really. It's just no fun, are you? He rolls his eyes yet again. <laughs> Just kind of like slumps back down. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, Roderick and them are wanting to go shopping. What kind of shops do they have here? No clue. Yeah, we're 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 planning on seeing what they have here in the lower district. Uh, 
Well, it has, hey. been, it has been some time, but I'd love to see what the, what wares they have. Um, I I uh I get up for a second, uh, out of my seat and say, "Hey, ma'am, I'm talking to the uh barkeep person. Uh, mm-hmm. can, uh, do you need this uh cup back?" Uh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have to go to go cups or anything. That needs to stay here. Understandable. Otherwise, I will call the stone guard on you. That doesn't sound understandable. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> doesn't sound understandable. Uh, can I empty my water skin and put the contents of my cup into the water skin? I mean... Sure. Where are you going to empty the water skin? Slide a hand behind me? Roll slide it to hand check. Uh, Do you hide the fact that you're, like, pouring it on the floor? Would would Lassiter do this? Uh... Would Lassiter... I mean, so far, you're drinking this. It tastes good. That normal effect you get from drinking a good a good alcoholic beverage, you're not getting it. It's a great flavor, but it's just as if it was uh, just a non-alcoholic beverage to you. Oh, no. I I take that back. Um, <clears throat> Ma'am, this is shit. <laughs> um, oh. Is there anything? Is there anything better than this? Your little boy head kind of like pops up, looks at you, looks back down at the amulet, looks back at, up at you, looks at, at the the barkeep, and just kind of shakes his head. Head is she's kind of like looking at the two of you, like for some reason there's a dis- thinking there's some sort of disagreement with this and. Little boar cat's like doing this, like, don't do this, don't do this. Ignore him. <laughs> he, he's he's my my pet. He doesn't get a say in this. <sighs> if you don't like the the beverages, then go find some place else to sleep. And say, I dare you to try to figure out where uh, some other place to sleep. I will not hear anything of this. That's one of our best best tales. But, not high end on the on the alcohol. Leaf. Yes. Try this. I hand the cup to Leaf. What is this? It, it's 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 a stout. It's a beer. No. Oh <laughs> God, come on. <laughs> no. Uh, Ga- it, Gage sees you doing this. He comes over and says, "Here." And he drinks it and he's like, hmm, this is very good. I'm not much of a alcohol imbibing person, but this is a very good beverage. I think there's some, something Leaf. wrong with their gore. Leaf looks at Gage with relief. Thank you. You're welcome. It actually is kind of good. I put my hand to my chest holding the amulet and say darn you <laughs> little Borkat is like staring at you Just you're getting the sense he's daring you to take another drink of that beverage I put the cup down onto the table and I walk out waiting for us to just go shop- shopping All right, so everybody um, goes shopping. Mm-hmm. Shopping, shopping, um, shopping. Uh, Jim Jar, you, you you do see Jim Jar come up. Oh, you're not finishing this. Ah, oh, this is some of the best. Ha 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 ha! We start drinking. 
There's like a single tear. <laughs> All right. So you make your way out into the dark black districts. Uh, everybody following along, I'm assuming. Yes. All right. Make what you looking for? Just kind of browsing. Oh, uh, what kind of shops do we first see around us? Uh, you see plenty of. Let's see if I've got a good description of this area. Belts would be nice. Maybe some shoes. Oh, wait a minute. So one area of the dark like district that you come to is the Blade Bazaar, which is very close to the Goldborn Zare lair. Do, do, do. Uh it is named named after the most abundant goods the Durgar have have to offer. But the shops Perhaps you sell almost everything available in the city, along with stalls set up by very visiting merchants. The din of people arguing, mostly dwarvish nearby, drowns out the hammering coming from the city forges. And the crowds here offer a good chance to slip away from pursuers if you had to. More of, I'm reading a block that isn't something that's normally considered to be read. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Roderick would be definitely interested in some possible magic apparel, if possible. Um, give me a perception check. See if he's does, spotting anything. Does Roderick let us know what he's looking for? Nope. Okay. Uh, you notice some very fancy uh, uh, weapons and armor, but you can't really tell if there's anything that's necessarily magical. They just look really well made. Any kind of like nice like belts or shoes? Uh, you do see see a couple stalls which have have just like general clothing, which include belts and shoes. You didn't say that you were looking for that specifically? Like for magic stuff? Yeah. Okay. A specific pair of boots I want. And uh, a belt I want. But did you tell us that or no? Um, being the stall... I will say I'm coming... I'm going to go over there. Like I'm going to just go look at this stall. There's... um. I've been uh, hankering for a new kind of boots and maybe a belt. The, the magical variety I've been I've heard about. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it's like? One of them is uh like the belt. It's kind of like from these the books I've read and stuff. It's uh, made of. Uh, uh, oh, what's it called? What's it called? Dragon hide. And these, the belt, the boots are more of uh, elven of the sorts. Uh. Uh, may I ask, how much money do you have? Well, everyone here has 400 gold that I gave them last, uh, last night. Okay, uh, my, I guess my main concern is, do you think you have the type of money for... Maybe not both of them, money? but the likelihood of me finding both of them are slim, so... Okay. Well, I... We'll try our best to help you find them, I guess. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, give me ten. 
Give me ten minutes. I might be able to help you. <laughs> okay. So, we got ten minutes. You will... Get yourself comfortable and... Virtual cast of tech magic. Kind of go out into, like, a alley or something, just kind of, like, out of inconspicuous instead of trying to cast magic, uh, ritual magic I in the middle of the street. Hands. Like a little, mm-hmm. just, like, balancing on my hands. And just... I'm you're, back. You're, you're doing a little performance? Yeah. Right, give me a performance check. It'd be athletics. <laughs> I just sit and watch. Oh, well, not sit. Just stand and watch. So that has not, doesn't look so good when other people are watching me. I don't do well. It, it, it it's while it's weird, you get looks. People just kind of like it's weird, and just kind of walk past. I was just seeing if somebody would throw some coins your way. <laughs> It's it's too down. mundane in exercising. <laughs> Ten minutes later, Syra uh, comes out with her owl on her shoulder. Ooh. The shoulder uh, eyes a little bit glowing, a little bit more than usual. Not something you you kind of have to look at her to really see that something mm-hmm. magical is going on. It's it's still kind of subtle. Not something that somebody would just out of their corner of the eye would spot. So I'm assuming you cast Detect Magic? Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe Laster has a amulet that's magical. Just whatever mm-hmm. magical items are on your party. It's pretty much what you see. And absolutely nothing else pings on your, on your radar. Ooh, there's a, a a magical mace that one of us has. Yep, that yep, means. I don't see anything of, of real worth over here. Maybe if we keep walking along. Yeah, well, but if we don't find it, it's not going to be hurtful. It'll just be a little nice to have. Based off of what you're seeing in these stalls, a lot of it is just mundane stuff good quality stuff uh when it comes to like armor and and weapons um and even some of the just clothiers uh uh cobblers and and all that uh look like really good quality stuff uh that of dwarven make you don't really see anything that's very elvish uh you do see a few oddities uh with some of the non durgar uh, vendors. Uh, looks like some people from out of the city have visit have made set up in some temporary stalls, uh, but nothing of actual magic. Nothing magical based off of what Syra can see. What's everyone else looking for? Uh. Mm-hmm. Either I'd personally like either a magic rapier or spell components or spells. I would say because they're not necessarily magic in of themselves, you can easily find a uh, a little shop that could easily sell some various spell components. Mm-hmm. Nothing of anything that would be higher than fifty gold pieces, though. So if you've got something about that you need value that has a gold cost to it, mm-hmm. uh, if it's anything above 50 gold pieces, you wouldn't be able to find it. But anything else you could. I don't see if anything coming up is worthwhile. Other than that, they have a sort of scrolls or spell books or anything of that sort. Uh, not really a thing that's really available here. I mm. found something that I think I might want, but 
I have no idea how to pronounce it, and it's not letting me add, I mean, send it to the thingy chat. Um, so I'm just going to add it to my equipment real quick and make an attack roll with it. What? What is it? I don't know. I don't know what it's called. That thing. Oh, Nicola? Ikla? Ikla? It's a simple melee weapon that can be thrown. Oh, it's just—it's it, just kind of like a mini staff, or, or a spear, and it can have different types of points on it. Oh, okay. I thought it was like, oh, it does say thrown. Damn it. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things that has like how it's thrown. I was just looking it up. Oh. I guess I. It's like know. a half spear. So it has this little thing. Maybe. That's kind of like this, that right here. <laughs> is a like holster type thing and you'll put the spear there and grab right here and just like eat it oh you see it a lot of um tribes and stuff in africa use it oh i just googled it and yeah that makes sense <laughs> okay never mind totally not what i saw in my head <laughs> um so yeah i, I don't Nope. Kind of like along the lines of Hylai, except with a spear, with like a mini spear. Have you ever seen Hylai players with the, the little like cup thing that they kind of whip and they to throw the ball? I have no idea what you're kind of talking thing. about. You did that with a spear like object. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And you said there's no magic stuff. That nope. we found so far. Okay. Does mean there's not magical items here? Uh, the, the scenery of this place, it looks like trashed and stuff, right? That's rude. Was, I would definitely say it's like <laughs> low a low brow, but yeah. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily like the slums. It's just a busy... Standard market. This is um middle class, maybe. Uh, I would the working class, like yeah, working class. Because you were right by the docks and stuff, so you'll see more. Honestly, I feel like nothing fancy. We're looking in the wrong place for this. Uh, th this area looks more like uh. It would attract more of, I don't know, working folk, you know, normal people. Well, uh, we were told not to, we can't, we can only stay, like, stay in this area. I guess we could try to go up to the gate, see what needs to be done for us to go into the next section, but. Adventure, let's pretty. go. That was interesting. Oh, break some well, rules. Why not? Let's look like over here and stuff more. Like go down, go down this way some more, and see what's here first. See what this whole area has to offer us first before we just be like, go to one little area and go up this place. Okay, let's do it your way. As you continue down through the blade bazaars, uh, noticed. Uh, you do over here in Dwarvish, uh, Roderick. I think you're the only one who can understand it. Eldith 
the only other person that I think can understand it. <laughs> uh, stay back at the. I can understand it. Basically, all no- all NPC party members are stayed back at the inn. So this is just you guys, all PCs. Uh, you do notice that there's a uh, Wondergar merchant uh, seems to be insulting one of his customers, but then the customer says something about wanting to p- purchase something, and then he's like super polite. Uh, you, you do notice that one of the uh, another one of the Durgar mar- uh, merchants somebody's asking for uh, uh, the price of an item, he says one thing, and then they start talking, then they say, what was that price again? And he says a completely different number. I can read Dwarvish. That doesn't help you right now. With eyes of the runekeeper? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you do notice that there's a, uh, uh, a Duragard merchant who's uh, in the middle of a transaction, and all of a sudden he uh, disappears. But you do still hear him talking. It doesn't seem like he even realizes that he went invisible. He's a source of... uh, you see another Duragar merchant that's uh, having a conversation with a customer and turns, uh, tur- keeps turning to the side and talking to the air, and turns back back to the customer and you, you hear something about, oh, he's invisible. What's going on over there? Do you do you understand them? They sound kind of yeah, crazy. they're they're kind of like keeping in like hush tones, just like our group can um, hear. You cast <laughs> exposition. Yeah. Uh. Oh. He he seems magical. Why not talk to him? They're in the middle of a transaction right now. Uh, It'd be rude to interrupt. Well, buddy. <clears throat> hey, eventually, it, this is like in general as you're walking through the district. So. Oh, uh, well, sometimes you you gotta like uh, you know push. To get what you want. Manners maketh man. I, I That's all well and good. I do like uh, people with good manners and all. But at this point, you kind of want something. This guy might have or know of where we can go. Plan on asking him, but I want the transaction to end first. Okay. Okay. You eventually, do. each of these will end their current transaction yeah. and go back to their their um, hawking. So, um, I'll go, once they're done, I'll go up to them um, and speak in tries to just uh, under common. Who 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 are you speaking with? Which one? Uh, the one. Each that of, is, each of the ones I listed off are different merchants. Uh, the one that was talking to the invisible person. The last one. Oh okay. Uh, it says ah yes. What can I do for you? Uh, just speaking in under common. Uh, I would just be like I was just uh looking to see what kind of wares you got here. Um, looking to possibly make a purchase. Well, I do uh, do have a few trinkets here. I got a few, got this uh, uh, a pewter merchant's weight. This was crafted in the form of a kraken. Yeah, small mirror etched with. Etch with a dozen eyes. Uh, I got this nice leather bracer. It's inlaid with some arcane glyphs. Oh. I identified this and it looks like pewter. It was pewter, right? Okay, yeah. 
And then I have this ring, which is which recently oh, just just appeared on one of my fingers. This is weird. I don't know. Was it your finger or was it my finger? I keep forgetting. Just, no, I I swear it was my finger. What do you mean it was was your finger? Of course. No, it was my finger. I remember it was my finger specifically. I'm sorry. He's so annoying sometimes. I understand. Uh, uh, I do have this little pewter cube. Got an insect gear on each of the, each of its faces. Well, what was that? Pewter cube. I think it might be like some sort of decoration, uh, possibly from another dimension. Like, have you ever heard of the Modrons? I think it might be something to do with them. Read about them, sure. yes. I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure. But as far as I know. Oh, yeah, I'm talking under common. Pretty sure. No one else knows what's being said. <laughs> I got this. Ooh, I got this little thing. And it's just this little tiny, tiny boat. Looks like it was crafted by, by like, from like a walnut shell. Oh, wow. Uh, I got this bronze amulet. That's a tiny secret compartment back here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that is very interesting. Uh, there is this one. So there's a small, small little... What were these things in here? Really? Can you do that? Well, that's really weird. What do you say? Uh, oh, uh, there's... It's Presswood Fairies. Presswood Fairies? Yeah, it's a small book of Pressed Fairies. It, it opens it up and you see these, like... Berries, which are like flat, like a, like you would press a flower. Roderick looks just a bit horrified. Uh, oh, we we do have this, and he pulls it. He pulls up this little like flat metal metal misshapen disc disc, uh, and you see like a uh, silver coin. Just kind of like stuck in the middle of it. it it's basically a coin stuck, uh, struck from a uh, strange. Ir oh wait, I'm reading this wrong. It's a coin struck from a strange iridescent metal. So it looks like a coin, but it's just real iridescent. Looks like metal. This isn't really worth anything that you could like pay anybody for. It's more of a collectible. I like collectibles. Uh, let's see. Um, what? <sighs> That's a really weird thing. Okay, okay, we got this really... I know, I'm about to tell them. Um, come on. Can... I, I, no, we sh No, we should... I mean, we, sh we should... <sighs> I wish you would stop interrupting me. Anyways... I got this. And there's a jointed pewter figurine of an elf priest. It's so weird because it's not even drow. No. Um, it's not. It. I have no idea who that is. Not a yeah. damn clue. Who is it that he has there? It, um, it, it's just a pewter jointed statue of an elf priest? Um, a legend check to see if you can identify it? Sure. I mean, you would have to get up close to look at it. Uh, you're not really sure. It's hard to tell. It's, it's just a little figurine. The the dead, you can't really see a specific cleric has no idea holy symbol or anything to it it just looks very priestly the cleric has no idea what the priestly statue is it's hard to tell 
obviously Sara is the priest person with the eight religion. So I have an eight and a few things. <laughs> well, also the religion is based on intelligence, and he's a wizard. So she's a wizard. So um, yeah. Her I always I, I honestly. Uh, I really think that, at least for clerics, that it should be a wisdom religion check, because it's clerical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that never made any sense. Hmm. Although, I, I would definitely say that Lassler could make a wisdom religion check. Uh, so you just do a wisdom check, and if you're proficient with religion you would add, add your proficiency bonus i can change my religion stat to mm -hmm. use wisdom instead yeah because mm -hmm. i do that for my athletics and um because of somebody's an astrologian it's hard to tell yeah, i have no idea who that is uh, are you sure this is an actual god or well, it's a priest. Well, it's, not, it's, a, it's a priest. Priest. Yeah, so you, they would have to. They probably have some sort of holy symbol, but the holy symbol and the figurine is so small, he doesn't really have any. He can't really detail. tell if there's any detail about what god it was supposed to be. In this case, it's just a generic Elven priest. Roger, this place doesn't seem like uh, it's much. Might want to look somewhere else. Are you sure you don't want one of these? They're great collectibles. Great what to take home. What about that iridescent coin? How much is that? This one? This that one is... One. How much is this? Oh, yeah, that... but... I mean, couldn't it be... That seems low. Shouldn't... I mean, the... this, this is unique. Yeah, it would be twice that much. Look, no, it, 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 this not no. This is not worth that. You get, you, you got to double that. Yes, one gold. Yeah, I don't think this is worth worth five silver. What are you talking about? Let let me take care of the sale. I will get the sale. It is one gold piece. One gold piece for a unique coin. Oh. I'm probably going to regret it. Sure, I'll take one. Uh, you can't understand, so is Roderick translating? Because <laughs> Roderick was speaking to him in Undercommon, so he'd speak it in Undercommon. He can also speak, speak Dwarvish. Do you speak Dwarvish? <laughs> I cast comprehend languages like so you can understand him uh do you speak dwarvish <laughs> do you no. speak dwarvish or do you speak under <laughs> no okay so he can't understand you <laughs> what'd you say about my mama <laughs> oh he turns to well, what did she say <laughs> yeah one moment The downside to being being, being in a, in a seven silver. All right, roll me a persuasion check. I'm not Squall. Why am I thinking about changing prices? Yeah, uh, I, no. No, let, let me handle this. Nope, one gold. One gold. That's a fine word. While they're... Oh, can have it. While they're... Alright, one gold. In different language, can I, like, look for whoever he's talking to? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, is, is that perception check that you rolled? Yes. Supposed to be for that? Yeah, you don't see anybody. I'm like looking uh, behind the. What is the fucking word? Um, counter. Hand over counter. Ten pieces of silver. Thank you very much. Really? You don't have a gold piece? <sighs> Fine. I have these ten silvers and I only get rid of He takes it, gives you the. You now have a coin struck from a strange iridescent metal. I flip the coin and then put it in my pocket. Here's your lucky coin. I will let you describe what's on the heads and tails. <laughs> it's a head and it's a tail. Uh, Cords ever keep a coin keeper. Sorry. I know. Cords not here in this world yet. It's just when I looked up coin, it came up. I mean, this would be more of something you would put in the other possessions part of your inventory. Which is at the very bottom, and it's just a text box. For those strange trinkets, they don't count towards your weight. Okay. Pleasure doing business with you. Pleasure be mine. Uh, <clears throat> sir, can you understand me? I I start translating. Uh, tell him I can't. He can't. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, um, ask him, who is he talking to? I, I'm just... Pretend I am saying what Lassiter is asking. What what do you say? Ooh, ooh. Uh, are you are you actually translating? Yes. Okay. No, I'm just twin brother. Keep saying it. <laughs> this is my twin brother. You look exactly like he's currently invisible. I walk away. I've 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 seen this type of uh uh brain damage in my past. It's uh he, he's he probably doesn't have long. Is there anything else that he's trying to cuddle off to us? Nope. He pretty much he, he has his wares all out. Peter merchant's weight crafted in the form of a kraken, a small mirror etched with dozens of eyes, leather bracer inlaid with arcane glyphs and pewter, a pewter ring that recently which recently and mysteriously appeared on his finger. A or was well, his brother's finger. He he doesn't remember. He's arguing with his brother regarding that fact. A small pewter cube with an inset gear on each face. A tiny boat crafted from a walnut shell. A bronze amulet with a tiny secret compartment. A small book of pressed fairies. And a joint pewter figurine of an elf priest. The coin was already purchased mm -hmm. by Roderick. And none of that showed up as magical? No, it's magical. There's some mundane trinkets. There's some arcane glyphs, but they're not magical. Like, they have the form of the glyph, but it doesn't have the magic of the glyph. That sort of thing. 
Yeah. Oh, maybe we should start moving on from here. Agreed. As you start moving on down through it, you hear the rhythmic hammering of the city's forges is drowned out by a second, but a thundering roar and the sound of crumbling rock. Yorgar and visitors alike turn to look as a two-headed, gray-skinned giant bursts through a gate, howling madly and lashing out left and right, littering the plaza with rock and stone debris. As he bellows, one of his swings connects with a Durgar soldier. His broken body flies through the air and crashes near you with a sunken crutch. Crutch. Oh, lovely. I ask, is he okay? <laughs> I, I cast spare the dying on him. Alright. You spared a di you spared a dying dwarf. Durgar. What are you going to do about stone. that stone giant? Uh, well, uh, people, I think this is our calling that uh, we need to take care of something. I don't know. Uh, there's not much here to protect. You no. Know, like, this is a city that is in need of protection. Two arms! Well, let's go. The Ooh, are we in an open area? Oh, Marketplace. <clears throat> as open as it can be. the spell will we die. Well, let me quickly... Are you talking about fireball? Just... No. Oh, I do have daylight on. Bells. Mm. I can hear... On the upper left, where the stone giant appears. Uh, Is that a third spell? Can't see anything. Yeah, it's just black. Yeah, I'm going to turn this off. Darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. There we go. Where did it Like, kill the fall. You guys are up here at a stall. This is not what I imagined at all. Oh. Huh. He looks friendly. That is fine. Just imagine that he has two heads instead of just one. Oh. Oh. Okay. He looks friendlier. Uh, Roger could probably appear. So I was right next to him. Yeah. I'm trying to turn. Last we're probably on the other side next to the board can. Well, little Borkad's actually on. And we got Silva, who's... I don't know, is there... Were we at the tail end of your madness? Your deafness? All up to you, I have no idea. Uh, I would say that it as you were walking down and as you were having this conversation, all of a sudden you hear this rushing of sound in your regular ears. Well, actually, you don't, because you're currently listening to Soba. Yep. <laughs> so you're not actually sure <laughs> until you <laughs> until you dismiss Soba or stop anyway, uh, peering through his senses. All right. So are, we gonna, are you guys going to fight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kill things. Don't fight. All right. Yeah. You bitch. He's first. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Did oh, I no. say I can't Ollie's first. Ollie's first. Anti ran. Oh, role player initiative. Initiative. Oh, I guess I'm not seeing anything. Um, the initiative tracker has an old one for us. 
Oh, okay. Let me let me reset this. Remember your numbers. Yeah. Oh God. No. It's on the. Uh, <laughs> Where roll for the strange giant? Twenty. That's slightly better. E. I keep on trying to change. You gotta type the number and then hit enter. Yeah, I. Okay, it did that I don't know what that was. <laughs> I'm just gonna change that to a simple copy. Yeah. Yep. Right. Who else do I need out on here? Gage, no. You don't have to sacrifice yourself. No, I'm just moving you to a position where I can hit add turn. Yeah, leave with six. And get to 19. And anybody I'm missing from here? I got a six. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're one there. Oh, okay. Alright. Hello. There we go. All right, so Holly. You're muted. All righty. So we're going to do is move. Yes. Oh, sh oh yeah, she had an arm. Fast movement. Yeah. Gonna get right up here. And then I would like to rage. Rawr! And oh, I need a Bubbles. deck save. Deck save for our Stone Giant friend. I'm assuming 17 saves. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it takes. One lightning damage. Just imagine the stone giant has two heads, by the way. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Oh. Nope, I'm going to go ahead and uh, swing um, my battle axe, my great axe, and This giant is unarmed, by the way. You don't see it with any weapon. Yeah. That's a miss. And number two. Dear God. 
apparently something about the uh, uh, two heads and the frantic movement is just he's just dare, barely dodging out of the way of her her axe wings. Just moving its legs. That be it. All right. And I'm just going to make a couple swings. This fists at Holly. Doing 23 hits. Yeah. Takes uh, 15 points of damage, reduced to half. Oh. Uh, so, seven. And he's going to make another attack. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, and slice so roll like this. As 34 points of damage, reduced to half, so 17. Lucky attacks there. Oof. That'll be his turn. Hey. Hey, hey um. Mm -hmm. uh, Oops, sorry, you, didn't mean to do that. You rolled a 40 20? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because he does, normally he does 2d6, but he crit, so he doubles the die, and the double double the number of dice is 4 from 2. That's crit damage, because he rolled a 20 on his second attack. Alright, Gage's turn. He's going to uh, pull out a hilt. A longsword's hilt. And he's going to activate the Dawnbringer. And charge up. Make his attacks. He hits. For 13, that add everything. Read this. Oh, okay. Nope, that's all I want to do. And second attack. Oh, he missed actually both times. I don't know why I rolled damage. And as bonus action. Yeah, I should have done that, but. Before, but that's okay. Copy. Here he is. Okay. He uh, has this echo. All right. Syra. She's going to reach out her hand on, uh, on Roderick. Tell him, go get him. He will cast haste. Roderick is hasted. Then bonus action. Pull out her sword and start her blade singing. We. Eventually we'll tell Silva to do her thing. And once her turn, she'll fly over. 
That's it. All right. So it's so the story because I think Sova goes right after you, doesn't he? Ah, uh, she has her own initiative, actually. Oh. Oh, there it is. Twelve. Okay. Roderick, you're hasted. Yeah, boy. That's a plus two to AC. Plus two to AC. Another action. They can only take uh, one. Plus two to deck saves. And double movement. Yeah, you can use that extra action for a attack. One attack. Outside of all the normal attacks you take. It is. Let's do today. See, uh, advantage on deck saving throws is an additional action in each of its turns, which you can use to attack once, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object action. <laughs> you guys, uh, Roderick is just going to look like a blur. Everything seems to have slowed down, Roderick. Just like uh, Quicksilver and um, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, Apocalypse. Yeah. I have a speed of 120 feet right now, so... <laughs> Damn! I'm a fast boy. And that's just with my regular movement. Not the fact that I can Dash, and then bonus action, step of the wind, and then dash again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you use, uh, use your action to dash, your hasted action to dash, your movement, and then your bonus action for step of the wind to dash, you've got four dashes <laughs> for four sets of movement. Anyways, moving on. All mm -hmm. right. So, uh, uh, at a skirmish in here. <laughs> Gotta move here. Um, going to bonus actions, uh, summon my astral arms. Boom. Um, uh, instead of now them, like, just floating outside my arms, like, like a second set of arms, you actually see them like are starting to encase my arms and all. They they send out more and all like then they can like they kind of still float and everything, but they're over my arms now. And then we're gonna go ahead. <laughs> Action one. First attack. Alec. Six force. Oh, I did need a deck save from him. My apologies. Oh, sure. I was wondering about that. Yeah. He makes it. Strangely enough, he has proficiency in deck saving throws. Uh, second, um, second attack. Uh, that will miss. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spend a key to add plus two to that. So okay, I love it. And hasted action. Love it. And then the hell of it move over here. Would they uh, disengage? No, mobile. Oh, that's right. Never mind. <laughs> I auto have disengage. <laughs> auto disengage. All right. Silva. Fly over and do her advantage thing. Why is over here? Hey, look at me! Look at me! 
Right, Lassiter. Um, first off, I still have control over Sarah's token. No, um, not for long. I'm <laughs> gonna change that. Um. Huh. I will. Uh, it it attacked, right? Yeah. It did. Okay. It, it gave. Uh, Holly it a ton. They hit Holly a lot. Yeah. So I, I and mean, that's I, just this. I'm gonna witch bolt it. Sure. Uh, Twenty-three. Twenty-three will hit. I. I've never used Witch Bolt before. <laughs> um, one hit, 2d12 right now. And then you can maintain it. Yeah. <laughs> 14 points of damage. I think that's it. Um, Alright, Leaf! Yay! Why, why don't I have you all make me a uh, insight check? Quickly. A what? An insight check. Insight. And uh, anybody can do this. So. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't don't mind did it. And I don't mind. All right. So everybody but Syrah. Nope, oh, that's a intelligent oh, save. Sorry. We're doing an insights. It's under your skills. I'm sorry. Yeah. There we go. That's oh. what I thought. So everybody but Syrah realized that this giant is crazed and terrified. It's just kind of like lashing out. Hmm. I have an idea. So what would you like to do, Leaf? I would like to use Entangle on him, but I've never used this spell before. Okay. I'm not sure how to use it. Take a look at it. Cast on... VTT? Yep, just play a VTT. Nope. Ah, it's a strength save. There it is. Strength save throw. Well, he's pretty strong. What he says. Yeah. All right. So you do a twenty-foot square, starting from a point within range for the duration. These plants grow the ground in the area is difficult terrain. Creature in the area when you cast a spell must succeed on the strength save or be restrained by the entangled plants until the spell ends. A creature restrained by the plant can use its action to make a strength check freeze. When the spell ends, the conjured plants will melt away. Uh, so he saves. Uh, where do you want to actually uh, center it? So let me actually draw it out for you. Where's my draw? Draw shape. The cube. The 20 feet. Wow. I like this. Hmm. Why don't I like put it here? So it's flying, so it wouldn't be need to worry about it. Okay, there, yeah. Hmm. Also, can I use my since I failed? Can I use my um bonus action and use my what's it called? My um 
Magic throw? Yep. Yeah. Fifteen. Uh, <laughs> you toss the magic stone. It hits him, but it just seems to bounce right off. Mm. I mean, get enough oops in the b behind it or something. Yeah. It's hoping to tie him down so we can get him to come down. If anything, he's in difficult terrain, so if he's trying to move, he has to. It's slower. All right, Holly. You're muted. Keep forgetting that. Bonus action deck save. Yay. That was a 23. How does one damage sound? Oh, sure. Um, we'll spark. That just happened. Um, kind of turns to everyone and just be like, "Does anyone speak giant?" And then brings her axe. Yes, there. Rattle it. 20 damage. Negotiate with that. Look at bloody. And make another one. Rit. Boom, shakalaka. What was that total? I didn't go through that. Here it is. Oh. Uh, 27. Four. Yeah, it's looking pretty hurt. That's looking like some nice damage right there. <gasps> That's for the crit you got on me. Oops, that's on my mind, dear. Uh, he's gonna hit back. Thirteen doesn't hit Holly, doesn't right? Nope. Okay, fifteen hit Holly. That meets it. Uh, twelve points of damage. Uh, reduce to half to six. Well, that's better. Yeah. Trying to look <laughs> bloody. Gave her tough, right? All right. The gauge, which is currently actually, I should have said that Holly had advantage on that on those attacks because uh, Gage's echo is opposite. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's supposed to work, but I'm going to call it like that because it's still kind of a creature. Well, the only thing that could have been better for the first roll is an, a crit, so. Where the second one was a crit, so. Uh, Gage will, will say, are we just trying to knock it out? Uh, I look scared. So, stop trying to attack the city. Well, let's try to not, not, knock it unconscious instead of killing it. Uh, so he's gonna attack non-lethally. Weapons, no, 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 he's gonna miss. Um, one, uh, two. It's uh, not doing very well. But he is going to. I'm going to just double check that he has this. So he makes a couple of slashes, then you see the uh, 
his uh, oh, echo, 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 make an attack as well. Uh, and they all miss. Well, I tried. Lyra. So, assuming she heard all, all everyone telling her, calm it down. So we're to soothe the beast then. Okay. We will step out a little further. She will cast a third level sleep. Roll it. So, that is what? 5d8. Plus an additional 48. Or 98. Okay. Roll 9d8. 44 HP worth of sleeping. Uh, uh, oh. And he falls over. Unconscious. It's in sleeping unconscious. Yeah. Excuse me. He only had 26 hit points left. I figured. He did a little overkill, you know. but hey, it's better to be overkill and this, that type of thing. I want to make sure he was asleep. <laughs> All right. As. He's falling over asleep. Uh, Dodd, uh, Gage, and uh, Polly jump out of the way as it's falling over. And uh, you see a uh, couple of guards uh, come out. Or Let's see here. Actually. Actually, we see. Eh. Here you go. I'm assuming, Leaf, you drop the entangle, right? Yeah. After he goes unconscious. Um. Oh, I didn't want to delete that. Here you go. I delete. Drain him while he sleeps, but I don't think that's necessary. It just vaporizes. And a uh, another stone giant. This one only with one head. Oh God! Uh, comes out <clears throat> following the stone guards and going to uh, check on it. Maybe yeah, I should check it out. Check it on the uh, the giant to just kind of starts examining them. Uh, this guy seems like he might be with the town? Uh, I would come up and just start, uh, speaking in under comment, like, uh, we, he started busting out, like, kind of just saying what happened and noticing that he was scared, so to we kind of tried to not uh, get him unconscious just so he wouldn't terrorize the town. Ah. Damage. ah, thank you for the, for the help. Uh, but I think you're going going to have to come through, uh, come with us. We need to report this to our to our leader, to our commander. Okay. The stone giant looks up to you and says, uh, "Thank you." For, thank you for not harming. Well, too bad, Rahad, Rahud. Uh, my name is Dorun. Uh, if you get the chance, uh, please, uh, co please come to the uh, Cairngorm Cavern. The, the Stone Speaker will want to speak with you. We we will uh, come. Over there, as soon as we can, once matters are settled. Is that nearby? 
Yeah, we can point you in the right direction when you're done with us. Of course, of course. You for the the this first. Um, but we'll make haste once everything has been cleared. Another uh, dwarf, uh, or Durgar, I should say, uh, looks more in a priestly type robes. Uh, comes out and says, "We want them to come to us. Come with us." The stone guard go. Keeper, you need to speak to our commander. Ah, but they will come with us. They won't go with you. <sighs> what say you? Are you going to go to the keepers or are you going to come with us? We need to report this to the commander and we will need the people who take care of this to go with us. The there is somebody of great importance that would like an audience. We divide in half. You never split the party. Um, <laughs> uh, um Well, this person of great meta. importance, I feel like if we myth them might be um something bad. Um if we give you um we will turn into the guards, we will as soon as we talk to this person, I guess this seems as very important, we will come to y'all. Um, you have our word, uh, we, if it, for any other reason, um, you know, we are staying at this, uh, inn, given the name of the inn that we're staying at. Yes, so. yes, all outsiders are at that inn. Okay, okay. Well, um, but we, we will be there as soon as we are done with okay. Keeper. So who have you decided that you were going to follow? Keeper? I, I'm voting Keeper. Because it's someone <laughs> of great importance that might not want to get miffed. Well, he said we, it was great. Person. We, yeah. don't, we, we don't, don't know. know what's going on. I mean, do you on. know? I don't know. <laughs> we don't understand what's uh, going What's going on. Going to jail or going with a stranger? Going to common. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Find you a dog. <laughs> um... I don't know, guys. It seems like the uh, guard people are pretty... Uh... <sighs> Fuck, I hate forgetting words. Um, I feel like we should go with the guards. Okay, Lazar chose the guards, so it's obviously the opposite. Let's go. <laughs> wow. Oh, he just He's got called out. Gross and shame. So, uh, so just to give you the options and to determine what I'm going to be prepping for next session, you are going to go with the keeper of the flame, or the keeper. All you heard is them call the keeper. Yeah, that's what I'm voting towards. Same. Well, Lassiter is voting towards the guards. Thyra. It's do we well? Do we really not want to split up? I mean, I know, I know that's the trope, but uh, I'd rather not. I mean, they know what we're saying. Also, considering the fact that um, even though you can comprehend languages, I'm the only one mm -hmm. that can speak them. That is true. <laughs> you don't understand what's going on. You can't speak them. All right. I'll go with it. So the flames it is. Yes. Yes. Alright. Seems kind of apropos. We go with the flame. Alright, you... Uh, a couple more of these same... priestly looking people uh, come out of the shadows. The shadows are well to escort your party somewhere else. <clears throat> Let me get you back to Grex. So this happened 
probably you were probably right around here. <clears throat> to point you. I'm gonna draw a route. So we're gonna uh play do 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 actually let me use a different color than that. Let's go with the bright red. Do 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 uh they take you through some gates down to another part of the city. We can't see anything. We can't see there anything. Now we can. I think yeah, you had to release it. Uh how did they open the gates? Yeah, they op there were guards at the gates and they opened them. Did it look like they used a lever? Was there a switch? They they motioned to somebody in one of the towers nearby. Okay. <laughs> Just open enough. All right. Do 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 do, do. and come down to here. And the the keeper uh, turns to you once you get get to the place. and says, "You have been chosen to speak with that audience with Thimberchad, the Wormsmith." Why? Oh, we we don't we can't understand them. <laughs> he says to you, Roderick. Do you, do you let everybody know? Do you translate? Yes. Okay. Why? Uh, I don't know. He's a giant red dragon. He asked for you. We can bring you here. I'll look at Borkad. <laughs> He's a, a, a red dragon. Uh, you look over at Borkad, and he's nowhere in sight. You big I snapped my finger. Summoning him. A red pseudo dragon appears on your shoulder. He he looks at you and you can tell he's like grinning. Is it is it Borcat or is it a different It's Borcat? Oh what? Mm. It's just now just for the moment, he's red. You are so confusing, man. <laughs> Why? Why are you red? What happened to the gold? I'm not saying this out loud. I'm saying it in my head. But, like... Hey, like Barkhead can tell kind of what you're do doing. He says... And he looks at the Keeper of the Flame and looks back and he says... And you get the sense he's saying... You heard what he said. <laughs> he, he said it was a red dragon. <laughs> okay. This is fine. It's, it just changes. It, you get the feeling that he, that he thought being a gold pseudo dragon might not be a great thing in front of a red dragon. Yeah, so. understandable, but like... So, so he yeah. went to change his colors and then was like, oh, wait, come on. You bring... All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> In order to do it, he has to disappear and reappear. <laughs> okay, let's go. The only, th the only problem is you need to call the summoner back. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll leave it there for next time. As we go see the see the friend, as you go have an audience with a red dragon. Which one? Interessante. 
Thank you for all, all for joining us. For anybody who's watching, anybody watching the video, thank you for watching. So we'll see you next week.